What to do when the world seems to be wobbling? With the current events that's happening in the Middle East, with the uncertainty of where this war is leading, each one of us asks ourselves the question, is the world wobbling? Is the world shaking? Is the world becoming unstable? World War II was a time that the world faced a war that it's never seen before. World War II ended. We, the Jewish people, as a nation, lost six million of our brothers and sisters, young and old. We swore Never again. God gave us a gift. From the ashes rose the Holy Land of Israel. We're currently close to 7 million Jews are inhabiting. Here once again, we are faced with a darkness of unprecedented proportions. What we have witnessed in Israel. And once again, the evil is facing the good face to face. The evil forces, the evil axis that exists out there is rearing its ugly head. That it seems that the unknown is becoming frightening. This is the goal of the evil forces to instill fear in all of us. And it is at times like this we ask ourselves the question. When the world is wobbling, seems to be shaking, and seems to be tilting, that we're just not sure where this is all going to end. So I want to share with you a thought taken straight out of the ethics of our fathers where the sages have written as follow the stability of the world the globe stands on three pillars the first pillar is the pillar of the torah of the bible of the laws that god has presented to us in mount sinai the second pillar is the pillar of Avoda, which is prayer. Our connection with the Almighty, our connection, our service in connecting with the omnipotent, the omnipresent God Almighty, the creator of the world. The third pillar is the pillar of kindness, of benevolence. These are three pillars that stand as a tripod that holds up the globe. I remember as a child reading a monthly newsletter that came out in the early 1940s. I was born in the 60s, but I remember seeing the front cover of this monthly newsletter was called The Talks and Tales. On the front page left an engraved image in my mind. This image ever since I was a child. I haven't seen that journal in decades, but the memory of this first page is very vivid. And it's a picture of the globe standing on three pillars, the tripod of the Bible, prayer, and kindness. Reminding me that when you have a tripod, when you have three pillars, and you have a ball on it, for it to remain stable, you need all three pillars. When one of the pillars becomes removed, 
The globe starts wobbling and is even at risk of falling. If one of the pillars become wobbly, the whole globe becomes wobbly. So here we are facing a situation where the world seems to be shaken. The globe seems to be wobbling and we don't know where it's going to land. What are we to do? The answer lies in these three pillars. For each one of us to think about the three pillars that are required for this world to stabilize. And each one of us can have an effect on these three pillars to make sure that they are standing firmly to create a stable world. Let's begin with the first pillar. The first pillar is the pillar of Torah, the Bible, the five books of Moses. These are the Ten Commandments that God has given to the world 3,300 years ago. Not just to the Jewish people, but to the world. To the Jewish people, God has given the Torah, five books of Moses, 613 commandments. But the rest of the world, there's the seven Noahite laws, the seven general laws. That were we to go back to the basics and begin observing them one at a time, you would contribute stability to that pillar. When we follow the laws of the Torah that has sustained us, that has been our guiding light for all these years, when you become close to your heritage, when you come close to your roots, and you begin studying the Bible, and you begin understanding, and you become you begin the first step closer to your journey of spirituality, realizing that this world is not just about the physicality, but about spirituality. You would then contribute to the pillar of Torah. And then the pillar of prayer. That when you realize that you're not alone in this world, but you are part of the 9 billion people that are living on this world right now. And we're all responsible for each other. We all need to lean on each other. We all need to pray, not just for ourselves, but to pray for each other. And praying means talking to God. Praying means connecting with God. Praying means coming out of your comfort zone when you have never prayed before and begin praying and realizing that praying doesn't mean just lifting up a prayer book and, and reading from the book, but talking from you direct to God. No one in between. You have a direct line straight to God. Begin communicating with God. Begin praying to God. That will contribute to the stability of the middle pillar. And finally, the third pillar of kindness and benevolence. God created us human beings. Although naturally there's a level of narcissism, there's a level of selfishness that it's all about me, survival of the fittest. But that's only one part of us. There's another part of us that is the benevolent, the kind, the generous, the sensitive. The, the, the spiritual part of you that sees another person and sees their need and understands what their needs are and feels their pain and you do whatever you can to alleviate their pain. This is what benevolence is about. The word is not charity. The word is actually doing justice. Doing justice with our fellow human beings. Reaching out and being there for a fellow human being in a need. Whether it is monetary need, whether it's emotional need, whether it's a spiritual need, whether it's a physical need, whatever it is, we are human beings designed by God to be a giver, not a taker. It is times like this that you need to make that decision, am I a giver or a taker? These are the times that we need to be a givers. We need to find a way of giving. Not only giving to those who have been affected by this terrible war to give there generously, but your next door neighbor, your classmate, your friend, your co-worker, 
Find out what their needs are. Go out of your comfort zone. Go out of your way. Invite them over for a meal, for a barbecue. Deliver a basket of fruit. Bring someone some love who you know who needs a hug, who needs some comfort and consolation. Do whatever you can, as many good deeds as possible. By doing ben acts of benevolence, random acts of kindness, paying it forward, you are contributing to the stability of the third pillar to keep this world a stable world. Do not underestimate your ability to contribute to the stability of the world. Do not consider yourself insignificant, just one person out of nine billion. But you are a whole world. Save one person is saving the whole world. And you are the world. You mean the world to God. Do not underestimate your impact on the rest of the world by your acts of goodness and kindness. And this is what we do to stabilize the world. Let's bring stability back to the world. Let's focus on these three pillars. The pillar of spirituality, of the divine, of Torah, the pillar of prayer, and the, the pillar of kindness. By putting ourselves in, diving into these three pillars, you would be you doing your part in these difficult days that you would bring stability to the world, that it shall no longer wobble, it should be a stable world, and ultimately the world will reach to its completion, which is with the coming of the Messiah, which we pray and we hope that that should happen speedily in our days. Every single good act brings us a step closer to there. God bless you. God loves you. May God protect our brothers and sisters in Israel. And may God bring home our hostages from captivity in complete health and spirit.